What's up Airsofters? In this video, we're gonna be discussing Thunderbees, how to set them up. There are a variety of Thunderbee options available, different shells and different tops, allowing for tripwire use or the standard uh, throwing use. At their core, they're a 12 gram CO2 charged uh, expanding shell causing a loud bang. Uh, the shell itself fractures when it gets overfilled with that CO2 gas. You do not want to be holding this when it goes off, so make sure that once you've primed it and pulled the pin and let it go, uh, that you don't want to be really anywhere near it. Just basic safety precautions. Let's go over what you're going to get in the kit. This is its assembled uh, state with the uh, hammer for the pin not set yet um, and the spoon just able to move freely. This is your arming pin, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. Let's talk about the basics of the parts included in the kit. I'm gonna start by unthreading uh, the included shell, and you can see the assembly here. At the bottom, we've got a threaded cap. All of the threading in these sets is a precision threading, so when you're threading anything in the Thunderbee set, you wanna make sure that it's threading smoothly. If you feel it grinding, you could be cross-threading the threads, uh, and that could very quickly make for a defective uh, Thunderbee. So we're gonna remove that bottom knurled cap and set it to the side for a moment. The intermediate portion is actually the portion that holds your 12 gram CO2 cartridge. You can get those here at evig.com or at most sporting goods stores. That inserts into the bottom. Now the cap holds that in place inside this center shell from which the gas expands into the outer shell. Inside this silver tube, you'll notice <clears throat> a rubber section or rubber collet that holds the 12 gram CO2 cartridge in place. Let's see if I can pull that out to show you. Sometimes these can fall out or get pulled out. If you wanna remember the orientation that it needs to be inserted if you need to reinstall it into the silver tube is, I'm holding this in my right hand. My left hand holds the rubber O-ring or rubber uh, intermediary piece and the conical portion uh, of that gasket is going to go towards the bottom of the tube. So I'm going to insert it like so from the top. And if we were to see a 12 gram CO2 cartridge inserted, this would actually hold it down in place like so. So now that we've got that oriented in the right location, let's take a look at the top of the Thunderbee. You'll notice the black knurled ring here can sometimes be loose when, they're, when you can purchase them from the store. This is what actually holds your firing pin in place. You'll notice it's spring loaded. I don't recommend pressing that piece with your finger as it's sharp enough to burst a 12 gram CO2 cartridge. So just be aware that those are sharp. You'll want to make sure that that is screwed down tightly uh, against the top of the grenade. Then you'll thread on the silver portion of the silver tube. Again, making sure that your threads are threading smoothly. Make sure that that threads on tightly as well. Finally, when you're ready to arm the Thunderbee, you'll insert your 12 gram CO2 cartridge and thread on your silver cap. For that, let's make sure that we've primed the grenade itself. In order to activate the grenade, there is a hammer built into the Thunderbee, which smacks the firing pin, ejecting the gas from the 12 gram CO2 cartridge, inflating the outer shell, and ultimately making it pop. This hammer operates in a circular motion around uh, a shaft, which is held in place by a clock spring, or a sort of a clock spring. When storing a Thunderbee, do not store them already primed and ready to fire, that spring will wear out. So as you can see, I've used my firing pin as a tool to pull back the hammer. You can see they've provided a hole there for just that purpose. When I'm ready to prime the grenade, I'll insert my firing pin into that hole, pulling it all the way down like so. Now I can hold that with my thumb and insert the firing pin in the side, keeping it out of the way. As you can see, it's held down by the firing pin. I can then place my spoon over the hammer, remove the firing pin while holding it with my hand, and insert the firing pin into its final locked position like so. 
An added safety feature can be to bend one of these tabs out, uh, preventing it from being pulled out uh, without your, uh, your say-so. Another thing I've seen a lot of people do is put electrical tape around them um, so that they can't open on you. So once we've done that, insert your 12 gram CO2 cartridge and screw down your base cap like so. Again, making sure that it's threading smoothly. Once we've done that and screwed on our outer shell, we now have a completely live Thunder V, ready to be used at any mill sim game or local field as long as they allow it. To use it, simply pull the pin, drop the spoon, and run. See you guys later.